Welcome back to the Black Pearl. It's Marine Tech Mike, and it's August. We're getting ready to uh, get back to school. So if you're new to this channel, we train technicians, mechanics, electricians to work on boats. That's our thing. We just got back on this old girl from a couple thousand miles up to Juneau and back. Things are working good. We're doing a little paint work. We're gonna paint the bottom next week, but traditions. We are bringing, every year we invite all the new scallywags down because we got a handful of these boats that we like students to go down and see and explore and do labs on. There's always a million questions on this boat because this boat is so unique. First of all, it's owner completed. If you remember our King's Pride series where we refit that West Sail, by year two I was really questioning my sanity about owner completed and, and Black Pearl's really no different. I've been on board this boat since about 1991. I've owned her for 15 plus years, thousands of miles, but things are weird. So this video is all about the exhaust system, crazy or cool. I think we're on version 3.0. And uh, after going to Alaska and that, we, we mostly are, are enjoying it. And so, what is it? Why did we do it? Well, one thing is we wanted to make the boat really quiet, but two, you gotta, marine exhaust systems are very complicated, especially when they're custom, because if you get salt water in your engine, that's why a lot of boats have to be repowered. What we have is a water separator. So we have a dry exhaust but it starts as a wet exhaust and we have an exhaust, a, a separator. So that's the purpose of the video. We wanna show our students that they do this on a lot of generators and there's a few boats on propulsion engines like this one that do that. And so what happens is the exhaust exits above the pilot house here, comes through the floor, up, and then kicks out. And of course you notice it's very close to the mizzen mast, the sail cover, if we're motor sailing and we, uh, run the mizzen sail out but the thing is it's uh cool it's already been cooled by seawater so it's just the exhaust gases that are escaping and a lot of times they may do those on the side of the hull or, or but on a on a boat like this you don't know if you're going to be on attack which side and so there are a few boats i've seen where they have an outlet on both sides but that would not work because of the hallway and stuff so let's go down below we'll start with the old system with what we had why I was concerned about it, and then why and how we changed it. Okay, let's talk about the original exhaust and why I did not care for it. And you heard up above, owner completed. So in the engine space here, we take a look. We got two floor layers of floor, one that you stand on in the pilot house, machinery space, and then underneath this hatch right here, which is, to, so we have double layers of insulation, super quiet, we could get into that some other time, uh, but that's why we like it. What Denny did is he put a water lift muffler way down here on top of the velvet drive. And it came out of the engine and Vernalift says you need at least a foot of fall. Um, he had about three inches maybe less i don't know so it didn't have any real fall into the water lift and then it's on top of the transmission with a big mount you couldn't check the oil and i asked about that you know before i took ownership of the boat his philosophy was well you know transmissions don't burn oil if i don't see it leaking oil i'm never going to check it and you know once a year change it well that just didn't sit well with me and then the second problem was if you look from down here where the water lift is up to where we were going was about five and a half feet tall okay so it came out of the engine with almost no fall all the way up five and a half feet over to the side and out the back of the boat well out the back of the boat is through the head through a little skinny compartment next to the aft bed through another skinny compartment and down. You're supposed to have a loop at least 18 inches above waterline. Um, and I think overall, because this lifted so high, it was probably okay, but it didn't have any kind of a loop for following seas. And uh, that also didn't sit well with me. So I was worried about back pressure. I was worried about not being able to see. I couldn't do any temperature checks on the transmission as well because the platform and the big muffler and it, I just didn't think it was a good system. So we decided we wanted to modify that and what we did, and I did that on the Perkins before we repowered, 
and we made a dry exhaust that went from the engine up to this here. Took care of that five feet of rise with a nice flex coupler. It has factory insulation um, that we had made. Um, it has a couple three mounts. It's got a pyrometer so we know how hot the exhaust is getting and we know it's not getting too hot. It doesn't have ex excessive back pressure now. Um, and then around the base, um, those two boards are fiberglass. The other sound boards, engine covers or hatches are soundproofed. So we got fiberglass, exhaust wrap, and then exhaust um, insulation from uh, down in Ballard. So we got this really nice riser. That was the original system. Welcome to the Scallywags, located in the beautiful Pacific Northwest, where Skagit Valley College has been training technicians since 1968. If you are looking for industry certification and the skills to work in maritime, this is the place to visit. Our staff will share so much knowledge and experience, you will not be disappointed. The workforce demand is very high and all of our graduates are working around the world. If this sounds... You just saw the old system that Denny had that I've removed. You didn't get to see the water lift, but you, you, you see the situation. Why was I changing it? It was working. It was working, but it was very, very loud. And when we had the Perkins, the 4236, it wasn't too bad. The old tractor motor, for whatever reason, it, it went out the back. You got to remember that once it left the injection elbow, the exhaust elbow, which is now raised up five feet, it goes out the back, there's no muffler because the head, the engine room, the aft cabin, there was no place to put a muffler. So along with the compromises of lifting too far and back pressure and no loop and no drop really like you're supposed to have from the, the elbow, I just wasn't happy with it. It worked, but after we repowered the new Yanmar, and I don't know if it's because it's a turbo or whatever, it does spin faster. Um, you know, we crew, you know, 2,500 instead of 1,750 for a seven knot cruise, seven and a half. The, it was loud. And I did a couple of things um, because it goes down out the, the stern of the boat, the noise was really reflecting off the water. So I put a 45 degree elbow. I tried to shoot all the noise aft. I know that's not really good because then everybody else has to listen to it. Still wasn't happy with it. With all that insulation I did and hard work to make this thing a quiet boat underway, I wasn't happy. And Sam Devlin and I had been chatting. He did this on a couple of his boats. The last uh, Tugzilla, the tugboat that he built, had the exact same Yanmar 110 horse 4JH. He put a dry stack, but a wet, dry, like this, dry cold, because it's a tugboat. And the, you know, he wanted to see the exhaust out the top of the boat. And I was like, I'm gonna try that. So what we did is we went in and instead of just running the, the pipe out, because if I built it custom, everything else is custom on the boat, why not do this? I could have a thin, so it wasn't in the way, water lift or water separator. And when you separate out the water and then run the exhaust over 12 feet up in the air, it's not noisy. And so it actually did, it did work out in the shop. We um, laid up a box on a CUSA board. And so we've got three inch that comes in and it goes down. There's a divider in that box and it'll hold up to like four or five gallons of water. And then we, I've got that little workbench that's in the, in the back, in the engine space, the machinery space, drilled a hole in it. Last haul out, when I put in the new shaft, we just put that video out. So I had the through haul in well in advance because I knew I was gonna do this. We put a two and a half inch drain right out the bottom of the box. So we got the box, the Yanmar in, drain right out the bottom here. And then we take a two inch pipe out of the top now that it's cold and we go across the top of the engine room and it pops into the head does a 90 and goes right up the mast and out and bam we have a quiet exhaust system seems to work just fine we um, cape caution the thing i was worried about is a lot of rolling we had six foot seas with no wind so we had tons of rolling this old girl rolls a lot if you don't get any sail up can't put sail up if there's no wind didn't have any issues that way. So after 350 hours or so, I'm pretty happy with, with how it turned out. Side note, uh, I just said it comes up through the engine room and uh, goes through the head. 
which is under a covering board. Where it comes up through the deck, that's hard fiberglass pipe. We put a short section of hose in here, a two inch flex to attach to the rigid part uh, because it'd be too hard to, to build that all in one. So while we are repowering home again, Mike Schweitzer is very grateful for uh, what we did and helped him with. He made this really nice mold out of a piece of wood in his shop and he brought it in one day while we were working on his engine, dropped this, did a layup over it, made a nice little fiberglass covering thing. We're going to probably put a little cover here. And then on the back side over here, check this out, it made a great place to mount my Dan Bowie, uh, my overboard, man overboard thing. I didn't know where to put it. And so it, it really worked well on the back deck here. Uh, there was just enough space to run the pipe up and clean everything up, cover it up, paint it to match. And so we were, we were quite pleased with that part of the installation. Wow. But it's, it's unique, right? We're gonna probably get, we've seen a little bit of um, you know, stuff, condensation, drip on the deck, and a, a little bit of dirtiness, which you get with dry exhaust, but I think it's, I think it's a keeper, version 3.0, we'll see. And um, yeah, so you, audience, you let us know, put something in the comments, crazy or cool, uh, dry stack on a motor sailor, who knows? And thanks for watching.